What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay. What a weekend. <laughs> There's lots of things happening. There's comebacks. There's comeback losses. There's trades. goals. There was a trade. Forgot about that. That's how. Yes. Oh, how, how, oh, how the gamblers have fallen. Oh. What, a, what a time to be alive. I'm your host, Kyle Dimitri's back with me as always is JD, the McDouble to my JBC. Do you have a preference? Uh probably the McDouble. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I find I find they are very different utilities. Yeah. You can just like hammer a McDouble and it's friendly. It's caught, it's warm, it's nice. Mm-hmm. The JBC is a little different. It's got the bacon, it's got the lettuce. It's kind of it's kind of Yeah. I think I'd like the JBC more, but I eat more McDoubles. I don't know. I'm more of the McChicken guy anyway. That's my go-to. Oh, mm-hmm. all right then. What do you think Dylan Gambrell eats? Uh, poutine now. <laughs> yeah, in the nation's capital. Let's get some beaver tails. We'll be talking gambler. We're going to talk leaf sharks. We're going to talk Bruin sharks. Jam-packed We're going to talk episode. real sharks. <laughs> Apparently. I don't know. <laughs> Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm really upset that we can't keep making the 82 and 0 is in play joke. Uh, it's okay. We did it in English. Obviously, first game of the season, 82 and 0 is in play. You yep. have to do it. Then we did it in French because it's funny. Yes. Then we, we did continued. it again. <laughs> yeah. in, we continued. In, yeah, and then we continued, and then we can't call this one. I was really hoping that we'd have to come up with another pun for this episode. Yeah. But let's talk Leafs. The mighty, 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 mighty Maple Leafs went Who down to San Jose. <laughs> are they bad? Uh, we, we did. Are the Leafs bad? Some people are saying this. Yes. You know who's actually bad? The Vegas Golden Knights. Dirty mm. little secret. Not they are some people s- saying. They just lost they- 2 nothing. They are super injured, and Pete DePore teams notoriously start out very slow, hey, but yes. I didn't say why. I just said they are, so yep. there, there's that. But the Leafs, they are not super injured. They were playing the Sharks on Friday. If you listen to our podcast, All Vibes, No Analysis, it was good. It was uh, literally no analysis. Mm-hmm. So we're going to give you a little more analysis. The Leafs uh, were fresh. The Sharks were coming off the second game of a back-to-back against Ottawa. Slow start for the Sharks. The yeah, Leafs were, the Leafs were uh, pounding them into the ice. It was really bad. <laughs> I had no hope uh, after that first period. I was like, well, that's the end of this game. Yeah. No, for sure. It was, we've kind of seen that recently with some of the Sharks games, including the Bruins game, where they just kind of been starting out a little bit slow, um, especially against better teams, and then have been able to come back um, in most of the games except for the Bruins game. But just something to keep your eye on just a little bit, just to make sure that this isn't a trend of the sharks but um, i think i think there's road trip factors right yeah and again you're you're you know small sample size and stuff like that but like you know i mean the first game against the jets they were down you know they came out and hammered the canadians who were bad um the sends the senators game you know they were down in that game the maple leafs game they were down the bruins no, they, they were up uh well no, i mean the um they were up. They went up one nothing. Then it was one one. Then it was two one. one. Oh, that then was two two. And then they then they they were off to the races. Yeah, which is so, weird. You think you think against all of the teams that they would be losing against the Leafs, but here we are. But yeah, it's but I mean, uh, sorry, other than that game. But yeah, it has been something where the Sharks have kind of struggled a little bit to come out um, of the gates, but they they seem to find their footy, which is compared to you know previous years where the second period was just the death sentence of the sharks and they could never do anything right um in the second period but it seems that they've so far have been able to kind of uh change that narrative yeah and i think it's nice i think the biggest thing that we noticed both in the leafs game and the bruins game is that when there's adversity they don't just and the senators game to me all that matter when there's adversity they don't just fold up shop they're battling back uh we'll get into the bruins game later but they were down 4-1 4-1 and scored two three period goals to make it interesting and, and had all the pressure in the world. Um, same with the Leafs. The Leafs, they score a goal. 
the Leafs immediately come back and score. And there was other shark teams where they'd be like, okay, well, that's the end of that. And let Matthew score five goals here. But they didn't. Timo Meyer. We, oh, when should we do Timo Meyer power hour? <laughs> that man is a man possessed right now. He is yeah. on fire. But when your stars are coming out to play, because Hurdle's been unbelievable. Meyer has been unbelievable since the season. Couture, the Meyer Couture Dalin line is just incredible at this point. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I think that that hurdle or the that first line is we kind of wrote them off like you know if they can just hold on going into the season but they have been driving play and driving this team right now we wrote them off yeah i mean but we we who wrote them off we were just like you know like okay couture if he can maybe turn you know kind of return oh, to yeah, form, you know, type of yeah thing. we need a doll we need a Darlene and Meyer to come back to life well yeah and too. they've all so far um have been doing you know doing exactly what we were hoping for them but uh yeah it's it's kind of crazy to see where like you know so like looking at the Bruins game um the Couture Meyer were just dominant their defense was a little bit below average but I mean going up against that the perfection line of course that's you know you're gonna get crushed on that so but uh but yeah i mean it's it's been nice to see in these guys you know especially Meyer, like you said has been a man on fire um in the leafs game where he just punks two dudes passes it to couture and then couture sets up uh darlene for the game winning goal like that's the stuff that we've been expecting timo Meyer to see and you've got obviously seven points in four games isn't sustainable but at the same time he's getting goals, he's getting a <laughs> that'd be sick imagine he just pops off for like a 95 point season mm-hmm. unreal but like a point per game player. I think I think that's enough. I think that's what we were all kind of expecting after his 30 goal season when he had 65 points, 66 points, 65 points. I don't see why it couldn't be, especially with the chemistry on that line that we've seen. Look at Darlene's start. The Darlene doesn't get off to that start all the time, but it's due to the fact that he plays with Couture and Meyer and they're just flying around. So Timo yeah. challenging Hurdle for being the best player on the team is only good for the Sharks. There's this. Yeah. That's what you needed to see out of Timo. And he's been doing it early. And it's crazy because last year he'd be loafing around and he would disappear. And then this year it's just like he's just you skating through that. dudes and he's he just, all around the ice. And he's today in the game, near the end of the game, there was a turnover and he was back checking, like stick in the air. And I was like, who is this man? Just running through dudes. It's great. Oh, yeah. It's it's awesome. The Le- the Leafs game too, I think kind of showed the goaltending aspect where Aiden Hill really helped them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was saving a lot of shots. It, it, obviously, Aiden Hill in the Bruins game wasn't great, but the Sharks also came off uh, 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 out flat. And let's be let's be real with the Bruins game. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest start, but it's kind of a schedule loss. Yeah, they're on an early season road trip. They've played three games in less than seventy two hours. It was a ten a.m. E- ten a.m. Pacific start time. Like, yeah, it was not ever going to be pretty. And Boston's really good, so. I don't think if they would have came out and wanted one today, I would have been like, okay, this is some serious business. We like, would have going on. We would have had, we had a real had to have a real conversation about how good this team really could be. But not only pants would have been off, shirts would have been off, <laughs> everything would have been off, all bets are off. It would have it would have been insane. But they came back and made it four three. Yeah, and you know if if the power play clicks in the beginning, you know Barabanov misses a wide open net. Um, there was they had a bunch of great chances in the the first period on some of those power plays. If one of those goes in, that game's a that's a four four game going into overtime, and you never know. So how that where turns do you out. Uh, where do you think you can watch the games? Uh, I mean, if you're you know like me, you have a bunch of different you know streaming devices and stuff. It's kind of a pain that you know that's where I might want to look into something like Direct TV Stream. So. Like I said, they've got a bunch of different devices. One where I'm watching on my laptop to try to catch the game. Like today, I'm watching the Dolphins on the laptop. I'm watching the Sharks on the TV. I'm checking in on my fantasy team. You know, now I don't have to worry about that with DirecTV Stream because you can get everything you need all together without the hassle. So you can finally get your TV together. It's called DirecTV Steam. It brings your live TV on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes. No need to buy another device ever again. The best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Should we do Eric Carlson Power Hour now? (laughs) He's been really good. And I don't want to hear this like slander on Twitter of like, well... 
no small sample size and stuff like that. He's been the driving. He's been one of the reasons why the Sharks have been good. Um, he's been playing awesome. Like, I it takes it takes honestly the best kind of analytics guy is the analytics guy that's like I want to see them play well and not score points. Uh, yeah. uh, like I I just don't. I know. Eric Carlson scoring. What does he have? Like seven points or something like that. Uh, it's like, yeah, How is like, that bad? Like I, I just, it's such big brain bullshit that you come out here and be like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. Eric Carlson actually isn't playing that well. He's just got some fortuitous bounces in soft goaltending." It's like, who gives an actual shit? He looks way better. Like, legitimately, this is one of the times where actually watch the effing game. And I know the person that was calling him out is a Sharks fan. So what are you doing? Stop being an edge lord. Nobody gives a shit about your edge lordiness. You also complain about Patrick Marlowe's games played record. Like, get up. Like, I just don't get it. If you turn on the game and you don't recognize that Eric Carlson's Carlson's playing better. Yeah, he's one of the better. He's one of the best players on the ice. And it's been like that the whole season. It's not like it's just, you know, flashes and stuff. And he's been he's been consistently better where like he's in his own zone. He's getting the puck. He's getting it out. He's making things. He's jumping into the play. That play against the Leafs. We got the breakaway where there was the two on one and he was the lead man and got it in close. If you would have put that in, that would have been nuts. But like, give me a break. Let the man is playing way better hockey after three years uh, of like, where can Eric Carlson be? And we've never, we've said all summer, we don't need him to be Norris caliber, but like a one, a first pair defenseman is what you need out of him. And look at what we're getting. And, and he just looks so much better. You can see in his skating, he's taking up the ice. His confidence looks better. His shot is like, actually going in because he's been snake bitten a little bit over his time in San Jose with the goals not going in. It's just been so good to watch. And, and he's had to drag Jacob Middleton around, not drag Middleton's been perfectly cromulent. We got to give, we got to give Middleton credit for being perfectly average. Yeah. Like Middleton again. So like against uh, the hockey stack cards, his against the Bruins. So his offense was just super negative, which that's Jake Middleton. Yeah, um, we, we're not, you're not. If you're relying on Jake Middleton for offense, something is bigger. Something else is wrong with your team. Yeah, but his defense was positive, which is so. If you can be positive defensively, and then you just let Eric Carlson him, do the offense. That's fine. That's great. Like that's what you need. So yeah, yeah. Um, I just, but, I just don't. And then Brent Burns is also clearly playing better. Yes. I, I just. I just don't know how you look at the team and have to complain about something or have to nitpick about something. It just makes no sense. It, it bothers me beyond belief. Why do we have to yeah. be that way? <laughs> I don't know, man. The vibe, it's the vibes only, San Jose Sharks. The vibes kind of dampened, though, because they scratched William Eklund against Boston, which was like, yeah. Oh. I get it. We'll get, like, I, we're going to, uh, Thursday show, we're going to kind of do a, a check-in on all the rookies and stuff and how they're doing. But, like, you can kind of see it coming, especially um, against the Senators game. He didn't play much in the third period against the Leafs. I don't think he played at all in the third period. And again, he's played a lot of hockey right now. So he played the development camp. He played the rookie tournament. He played a, every preseason game. And then now he's been playing in you know the actual regular season. So I don't mind scratching him for a game here and there, especially when you're on your first road trip. You just came off your first back-to-back and you know like let him take a breather and then come back as long as it's not like this is two this games is where it's row, me this is the slippery games. slope for me this i i know like yeah if he's back in the game like back in second line with hurdle and and rudy on tuesday yes if you bring fine. him back and put him on the fourth line like, then we have a that's, problem <laughs> that's that's where it's wrong and this is what we were talking yeah. about before the season bob needs to let some of his young guys have leash yes look at the lord the lord played a really good first game and was kind of just like a guy on the ice yeah. for the next couple of games, which is fine for a sort of four C, but then he scored today. Yes. And so, he was out there on when in the, it was in the final, final, like, yes. Two minutes when the, when goal, the was Sharks cold. had to score a goal, Lord Jasper was out there doing Lord Jasper things. Screen. Wouldn't it be better goal. to have William Eklund out there on the ice in that moment? I think it would so. have been nice, but, but yes. that's what I mean by leash. Like he's got to give them some leash. Obviously Darlene's leash has got to be super long because dude's on fire. Uh, he's awesome. But I, I just hope that this isn't a classic. He's a rookie. He needs to sit down. Oh, well, he's yeah. going to sit down for an extra game. Now he's going to, because his ice time was trending down in those last couple games down to like 10 minutes, 11 minutes, 12 minutes. And it's like, you got to let him play. He's clearly one of the better players on the team that makes them better. And yeah, if you want to sit him down for one game road trip, I get all that, but it's yeah. the start of the slippery slope where coaches fall into bad habits. And I just, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just a little nervous. I've been, we've been burned too many times before. We've been burned too many times before, but I think 
Tuesday's game against Nashville. Nashville hasn't been very good. This is a perfect chance for Eklund to kind of come in and, 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 prove or show why he belongs on that second line and why he's a contributor. So, yeah, and, I you know, he, and he's I had think, three points in four games. It's not like he's yeah. been bad. And he's so. been playing on the power play and stuff like that. And there's, there's moments in every game where it's like, Oh, there it flashes is. where it's it. like, yeah. Oh shit, there he is. It's like Ottawa. They just played Ottawa. Tim Stutzler last year didn't have the best analytics season, stuff like that, but they didn't sit him down and be like, well, you need to learn a little bit more. They just kind of let him play through his growing pains and stuff. And now look at him this year. He's awesome. So I just really hope he comes back. Uh, and, I guess they would have to, like Matt Nieto would be my guy, because Lane Patterson also got scratched um, in the Bros- in the Bruins game, and and Barabanov and Gajojevic came in. How did you yeah. how did you think Gajojevic and Barabanov did? Barabanov was okay. Like I said, he had a wide open net that he missed on the power play, and I know Bob kind of talked about like how he was kind of meh uh, today, but based on his, you know, that could have just been rust since he hasn't played. Uh, Gajovic, I thought was pretty good. He had a, he had an assist on the uh, Jasper goal. And, you know, I think he, he could be a guy who can, you know, again, if he's playing your third or fourth line, that's perfectly fine. So um, I think he's going to be one of those guys who kind of bounces in and out of the lineup, depending on what they, they want to do. And if some guy like if Pedersen's cold or, you know, if they need, if Nieto is not playing well or something like that, like he's going to be one of those guys who bounces in and out. Yeah. Gajovic is like winger Jasper. Yep, he's just so. like big, can get pucks and stuff. I, I don't mind. I don't mind Gajovic over over Lane Pedersen if Lane Pedersen, like you just said, if he's not working, try it up. But like Matt Nieto needs to probably take a seat. Yeah, because he's, he's not really doing anything. Yeah, I mean he's like a penalty kill guy, but it's like every time he's on a breakaway or something like that, it's just like you know he's just not gonna yeah put it home. So putting Eklund back in, moving Barabanov down to like a line of like Barabanov. Benino, Bear Benino, LeBanc. Benino LeBanc. Yeah, that's, that's a, not too bad. Yeah. Have Gajojevic, Cogliano, Weatherby on the bottom, and then Eklund. Like that, that's a, I think that's a better lineup. Um, obviously, we'll see as we go on. What do you uh what do you think Eklund was munching on in the press box? I mean, there's only one choice. He's especially he's pretty tired first road trip. He's got to get that some energy, get that protein back up. So I'm assuming he probably went with a built bar. Yeah, what flavor do you think he went with? Probably the salted caramel. He talked about the salt. You know, he's. Oh, like, you think he followed followed his dad, Eric Carlson's lead? Yeah, the you know the salted licorice thing. So yeah, I I assume. Yep. So his favorite is salted caramel. Same with Eric Carlson. It's canon. It's fact. Fact. But you might have a different flavorite: coconut, cherry, barcia, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate, double chocolate, all of the chocolate, all of the time. Rocky Road, not my favorite, but it's good. I'm personally a big fan of coconut brownie. The thing that thing was that thing slapped. And if you haven't tried them all, you can get a mixed box where you get two of each of the nine flavors in it. But if you do have a flavor, you can just order a box of the ones you want to eat. And not only are built bars tasting good, they're healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180, depending on the bar. Only four to five grams of sugar, only four to five grams of net carbs. Tastes like a chocolate bar, but it's healthy. So order today. Get whatever your flavor it is. We don't care. Different strokes for different folks. Variety is the spice of life. When you get it, you'll see the little logo because Built Bar is the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team, which is pretty cool. So go to Built.com right here. Enter the promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. JD. Yes. We have officially known when to hold them. And known when to fold them, and we have thrown in the cards. Yeah. Can you? Can we find a game? Can we? Can we find a Gambrell highlight pack or like a highlight or something? No. We should find the goal when he scored against St. Louis in the 2018 and finals and put um, the "I will <laughs> yes. remember That's you" it. song over top of it, really slow. And then him taking some uh, some defensive zones uh, face yeah. offs. We should we should we should make that in honor of Dylan Gambrell. We never disliked Dylan Gambrell. We just thought there was better options. Yes. Um. And the tried yeah. and true method of going back to the thing you know is never works. So, I. Uh... What a world, Dylan Gambrell, third line, <laughs> second line center at one point last year, uh, traded away for a seventh round pick back to Ottawa. Um, Sharks get their original seventh round pick that they used to acquire Christian Yaros last no harm year. No foul. It's a closed loop system. Yeah, full closed loop. Uh, I know Kyle is very excited about that, but yeah. yeah, I mean, I think this shows just how far the Sharks have come in you know one off season where you know you can move on from a guy like Dylan Gambrell because 
you've got guys who can who are playing you know nhl minutes right now and guys who in the system who you think can you know surpass dylan gambrell i mean it sucks that you had a second round pick that didn't pan out but it's that's the reality than, of life that's reality of, i mean guys don't pan out all the time so it's it's better that they moved on and aren't trying to hold on to the dylan gambrell factor you know the experiment it's yeah the sunk cost fallacy is real especially with those high picks yeah you don't want to keep trying to force the the square peg in the round hole like, that's just that's just not what you want to do so i'm i'm glad that he's getting a shot because ottawa's roster is poopy Come yeah, this, yes. this tells me I think the Shane Pinto injury might be a little bit more severe than they originally think. If Yeah, might... congratulations to depth defense for Mario Ferraro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, so hopefully he gets a shot. Uh, Find obviously... someone who loves former Shark centers like the Ottawa centers. Chris Tierney, Dylan Cambrell, Josh Norris, baby, up and down the middle. Down the wall. <laughs> <laughs> we need to trade the one more. <laughs> Is that Noah Gregor's music? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> but uh, imagine, and then imagine thinking the Sens are in a better position. Oh, my we're Lord. We're not going to bet. Anyway, uh, we're not going to turn. We go listen to our Sens podcast. Anyway, but um, yeah. yeah it, come at us, precious fans. Come, precious fans. Those in the air, throw your jerseys on the ice. Is somebody going to, oh, some poor guy is going to have their, his original 14 Dylan Gambrell jersey. Had to, that's like an artifact now. That's like a collector's item. Keep yeah. that. <laughs> Throw it on Dorks the ice. like us in like 20 years. He'd be like, oh, I remember Dylan Gambrell. Yeah, I want that. But he had the like 14 stuff. jersey, remember? And then Nyquist, uh, when he got tra- Nyquist got traded, he swapped. Uh, Dylan Gambrell swapped the seven when Nyquist got here. But the, go- the goose. The goose the was goose. loose for a minute I there. do miss that was, the that goose. That was nice. Somebody else who's been really loose. Um, Shimmick Vlasic. I think Ugh. that pair gets we broken have to? up. I think that pair. They, going into the Nashville game. Bob They've got to bench Shimek, right? Yeah, I think I I think we see how to uh, I, Yeah, I think we see our boys Centauri here. Did Bobby so. B? Did Bobby B say anything about the pair after the game? I don't I don't remember him seeing anything uh, saying anything after the game, but it's it's just you can watch it on the ice. It's just bad. Where they're it's, just it's not, they can't not, they just get good. pinned in their own zone. They can't do anything, and yeah, they they got to split that up. They need to do something, but I don't think they want to break. Obviously, for our Burns is staying, and Middleton yes. Middleton Carlson has been working, so I don't think they're going to break that up. I, I, it's got to be Hataka time. Yeah. I, 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 how do you how do you keep watching this? <laughs> they can't even get the puck out. It's so bad. There was so it's, many times. It's, yeah. it's not a good pair. I, like if this was Vlasic even three years ago, there's some little there's some juice there, but this is not. This is not it. No. Oh, ooh, it's bad. I was gonna say with Dylan Gambrell, the the Cuda lost their first line center, <laughs> but I guess they have Noah Gregor. <laughs> oh, that so, just means more Scott Reedy. So, yo, oh, Scott Reedy comeback to her, revenge to her. The, the <laughs> path is open. The Moses part of the sea is here. Uh, yes. Scott Reedy's coming for you, the Lord. Uh, shout out to the Lord's dad. Yeah, shout Dick, out to the Dickin. Lord's Dickin. What is actually the name is Dickin? <laughs> We're not joking sh- either. We're no. not joking. His name no. is Dickin. Yep. Um. Shout out to the guy at Target who was watching Locked on Sharks on his phone uh, while he was shopping at Target. And I ran into him and he introduced me to Did his... he recognize you? Uh, like, I was, was like... like, I was like, I saw him. I was like, hey, are you watching Locked on Sharks? And he like looked at me for a second and it clicked. And then, yeah. Uh, shout out to his, I think it was his girlfriend. Poor girlfriend who has to listen to all of our dick jokes. I apologize again. So, yes. To come talk. Yeah. That's a natural part of life. Mm-hmm. What what uh, what was his name? Uh, I didn't catch his name, so but he sent us a message on uh, on Instagram. So I, I sent him. Was so. he the guy that called us idiots? Imagine it was him. <laughs> I <laughs> would hope so. That'd right be there. great. Okay, that'd, be, that'd be sick. Uh, <laughs> nobody's ever watched me in the wild yet uh. on YouTube. Uh, so I don't ha- I don't have that. Nobody's ever recognized me either. But like, my chances are lower. Yeah. Yeah. There we have Canadian listeners, so we'll get there. Yeah, there's like six of us. If you want to reach out to us or watch us in Target, uh, get Please at do. us on Twitter, Locked on Sharks. We're uh, we're all over there. We're all up in the business. Uh, one of us will be manning the station. Uh, we'll usually reply, so get at us with anything you want to see or just tell us we're great. It's awesome. Facebook, Instagram, JD puts up all the work there, so if that's where you get all of your social media stuff, you will be able to message us there as well. YouTube, obviously, if you're standing in line at Target and you really need to get your fix of us two jabronis, 
uh, we're not going to stop you. So you can definitely do that. Subscribe. I think we're over 300 subscribers now. Yeah. Yeah. Like 325. That was, that was, more, of a, that was more of a question. <laughs> yes. Like 325 right now, I think. So, yeah. Good for you guys. Uh, if you'd like to email us, uh, lockdownsharks at gmail.com. If you haven't, thank you for your service. Uh, we didn't really get... We got like a real one. Somebody somebody gave us a prediction. Uh, oh, oh, hold on. I'm going to do that one after. This Gray Sato person said, the con- the three stars of the week are the content boys, boys. I don't know what that means. I don't have any boys. Hmm. Children. My, my kids are the... Yeah. Three stars so then this week. other guy, Frank, sent us an email. He gave us Sharks uh, will win prediction. Uh, this was on the 22nd. So I'm assuming this is before the Leafs game. Couture, Eklund with goals. I don't think you didn't score, did they? Uh, Couture might Couture have. Couture did. Yeah. Burns gets a power play goal. Uh, negative. Middleton fight. Uh, Middleton, Middleton was fight. scrappy. Yeah, you got to fight against the Bruins, though, right? Uh, when a rookie gets checked hard. I think that kind of sort of happened. Yeah. Sharks went 3-2 in overtime. Uh, Sharks won 5-3 in regulation. But, but, though, I got through all of that because there was a PS, a postscript oh. attached to this email. It says, PS. <laughs> we have a new combatant entering the arena. Hmm. Arby's curly fries leave everyone else's in the dust. I'm not an Arby's man. I like I like Arby's beef and cheddar, uh, but their fries are terrible. Get out of here. <laughs> you got the meats? Oh, I got the meats. <laughs> I haven't had Arby's curly fries. We do have Arby's here, though, so I could try. I could yeah. tomorrow go try some Arby's. Hmm. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I don't know. Is there an Arby's in Vancouver? Hold on, we're gonna do this live. We're doing it live, buddy. Okay. Arby's. <laughs> See locations. Uh, yeah, there is. There. Oh, it's in. It's in Burnaby. I don't want to go Burnaby. And there's one in Delta. And then there's Let's one see. in. There's one in Those Langley. Those are not real places. Those are not real places. No, no, that's too far. Sorry, Arby's. You're yeah. out. If you'd like to talk to JD. Uh, but which target he shops at, you can do that at my fry hole. Uh, if you want to talk to Kyle about uh, his curly fry, you can find him at Kyle Demetrius. I got nothing. <laughs> Thanks for making us your first listen. I got it. I'm out. Let's go. Okay, bye, friends. <laughs>